association is an integral part of the life experience for a Naiji. Um, and like many other things mentioned about the Naiji, it has some rather um, eerie and maybe unnerving connotations uh, uh, and context to it, but it is just part of being a Naiji and the, uh, the only option is to understand how it works and then do it well. Okay, so first, what is dis disassociation? This has lots of meanings to different people. Uh, there are books and books and books written just on what exactly disassociation is. There are many people who argue whole books on the other person's version of that is incorrect. So um, we'll just put out a quick one here. If you go with sort of like the street version, there's two kind of elements that I think most people would include as part of being disassociated. One is um, a non-attachment to relationships and a non-attachment to reality. Well, uh, Nai and Zai are both uh, are good at doing those things. Uh, Nai, uh, as one of its primary abilities, the first is power flow, is detachment. So detachment uh, makes you really step away from V, which is the concept that's concerned with reality. So if you have a lot of Nai, and Nai Ji do, um, then there's a strong propensity to being disassociated from reality. Um, that doesn't mean that it's a bad thing, it's just something that Naiji need to know that that's part of the process. They step away from reality and then step back, <laughs> hopefully, uh, wiser people for the, for the effort. Um, but they will actually be stepping away and coming back and stepping away and coming back. And sometimes they may forget that they need to step away and often, and this is the case here, they may step away and forget that they're supposed to come back. Um, so that is something that needs to be um, uh, kept vigilant for. Uh, that's something that actually, for example, the other um, of the Naiji uh, really helps because they make returning very, very um, appealing. Um, next, dispassion. That's Zai. Uh, Zai dispassion is uh, one of the cornerstones of its power flow as well. And that tells you to not listen to people and not be overly interested in their opinions and their feelings and their attachments or expectations of you. Um, that really that's something to be ignored, uh, even shunned. So that would be um, uh, another uh, definition of diso uh, disassociated. So uh, again, that's not a, uh, a bad thing because in order to help people, you actually need to tell them to be quiet for a second so you can actually see what tactically needs to be done in, their, in order to best service the people. So if that's not able to be done, you may be passionate, but you'll have the wrong answers. So you want to serve the people, but you're serving the people with the wrong answers. So there is a need to step away from what the people are saying the data is and actually just passionately look at the data or look at the circumstances and decide and then go back and again reattach. So step away and then step back a, a smarter person. Um, there are two mojos that share this uh, propensity, which is the Naiji and the Zai V. And that's because there are only four mojos uh, that have Nai and Zai as their subconscious, conscious powers. Um, and that is, uh, sorry, I mean their subjective conscious powers, that's what I meant to say there. And only the Naiji and the Zai V are subjective mojos, meaning that they spend more of their time in their inner world than the outer world, so it has often more meaning to them and definitely more pull on them uh, in, in, in a great many ways. So that's something that they share as a bond and it's something that can be a good thing in order to step away. Often they have sort of like a cave dwelling survivalist motif going on, the two of them. They can be uh, good friends um, uh, sharing that bond. But the goal should always be to return to the world in order to reconnect with people and to show off what you've learned in your solo travels with natural law. So both of the, uh, the Naiji and the Zaibi have like a natural law loner vibe to them. Um, and they can feel a great deal of personal identity with that loner communion with natural law and may think that there's no reason to go back or it's weak to go back or it puts you at risk to go back. There's many reasons why dis dis being, being disassociated can feel if you're one of these two mojos, like you're hanging out in your ultra cool bat lair cave, and technically you can't go outside, but you don't really want to. And you kind of, you know, I mean, you do, but not that much. And so you kind of like to write it off. And you really shouldn't write off major portions of your psyche, um, but it can be appealing um, to those two mojos. Um, the reasons for this has to do 
as mentioned with them being subjective powers and mentioned being um, concerned with detachment and dispassion. But you can also look at it from the scientific spirituality index that for Nye, um, it's quite far, even though they actually um, do share some things, to go from Nye to G. There's quite a gulf. There's a gulf of what, eighth position to fifth position. And then with Xi and V, there's also a massive gulf, the gulf of fourth position to first position. So from the standpoint of those two compounds, both the compounds, an element of it is that they're compounds that often just the compound itself is difficult for the mojo to come to terms with. Uh, because some um, Xi V, for example, can find the kinetic experience so foreign and um, non-logical because of its randomness, its chaotic nature, that they don't like it. And Nai as we often have talked about, uh, find Ji mm, to almost be sometimes off-putting to the Nai. The Nai is like stupid fucking humans, and that's an attitude a lot of Nai Ji have. So that's the gulf you'll see, you're seeing between Nai and Ji, which while I, a lot of times some go right to Nai to Zai because it's, it's comfortable in there. But when you go out in the real world and talk to people, it seems so different, and there's such a gulf that uh, there can be a desire to like, you know what, let's just park it in here and stay in here. Uh, but that's not what you're supposed to do. Um, now the proper usage, there's proper and there's improper. Uh, proper usage is that it offers a tremendous amount of self-protection. So uh, Naiji and Zai V excel at being survivalists, both physically on the right side and psychologically on the left. That left compound of Nai over Ji really prepares you for psychological onslaught. And Xi over V on the right really prepares you for physical onslaught. So it really helps in survival. Um, it helps um, enduring things that maybe you couldn't endure otherwise if you were to really be there. You need to be able to speak and you need to be able to move, but other than that, feel the impingement and the pain and distraction of life as little as possible. Um, what else? It can be very useful um, for the case in the, of the Naiji of mojo reading. It, you want to actually be able to understand what you're looking at using G and V, but then really be as uninvolved in the equation as possible. And Nai and Zai allow that complete uninvolvement in what the answer is going to be. So it's helpful to give uh, your tribe good answers if you temporarily don't care about them, don't care about yourself, and you're just gonna go over and look at the you know, um, oracle of natural law and see what Nai and Zai have to say, and then come back and say, here's the answers, let's play smart with these answers. These are good answers. They may not be answers we like hearing, but they are the truth, and so let's be smart with how we play it. Um, what else? Those are basically the, the major proper usages. Improper. Um, fear of attachment, fairly obvious. Uh, you do need to attach. Uh, Fo Zen, for example, is a form of, of disassociation, actually. So uh, that's incorrect, but there's many forms of disassociation, uh, disassociation besides Fo Zen. Uh, but they all basically are a way of not attaching. For example, um, main uh, Naiji who, not many Naiji, but many of the Naiji who take the fetish of scoring um, uh, sexual conquests in some way, um, they can use the dis disassociation to not feel what they're doing to another human. Um, and so that's a not a good use of it. Um, fear of failure. Uh, Naiji often, forget the Fozen falls into this, but many other uh, Naiji do, even ones who uh, know that they are directive. But they basically pick apart other people and they don't put forward their own thing. They disassociate from wanting to actually go out into the open environment where you will be looked at and graded by the world at large, which uh, is scary. So the being uh, disassociated makes you feel like, I don't need that. I don't need to follow my ambitions into the world. And of course, yes, you do. Um, finally, silent treatment. Naiji have to watch out for um, extreme displays of energetic eruption that will just frighten people for years and also for going cold, ice cold and freezing people out. And so that ice cold thing, uh, the, the going, getting very, very angry, you really see kind of like brought to a pinnacle in the warp frenzies. The warp frenzies are kind of like, whoa, that taken to its, its worst. The 
being overly chilly and um, non-demonstrative in order to get people to do what you want um, or in order to control people by showing that you don't care about things, um, that's basically being disassociated and using it as like the most ultimate uber cold shoulder ever. And that's not really cool. I mean, there's gotta be some real reason to do that. And at the end of the day, you should move on or find a way to heroically associate. But you do need to associate. So go somewhere that you can or do it where you're at in some way. But to remain disassociated is to be unheroic. There's no reason to remain disassociated.